risk and benefits, and this is an important area where pharmacists um, should, should know and should review with patients um, in order to also help educate patients on their disease state, as well as um, we want patients to be compliant with their meds. So it's really important to go over um, what maybe some of the side effects are, some of the risks are beforehand, so that patients are um, familiar and understand that, and then are able to be compliant so they don't think that there's something necessarily wrong or that it's um, a side effect that wasn't supposed to happen. So I'll start with the two new agents that were recently approved. Um, the biggest side effect for liraglutide that was seen in, in all of the uh, obesity studies that looked at its use was its gastrointestinal upset, um, which is part of its mechanism in how it is successful in weight loss. Uh, so that's an important factor for pharmacists to review with patients and that patients should know that they're going to have this potentially, um, but it doesn't mean um, that they should stop the drug. In addition, the big aspect for pharmacists on counseling with this is that it is a slow titration. Um, you start at 0.6 milligrams and then every single week the dose is increased till the full dose of three milligrams a day, which doesn't happen actually till week five. So that's another important concept that it has to be that slow titration up in dose. Um, and that slow titration up in dose is also thought to help um, kind of combat the gastrointestinal effects so it, um, the patients would be more compliant. That's the biggest side effect from that particular agent. The combination of naltrexone and propropion is um, not so much the side effects that patients will have, but where pharmacists really need to be familiar is on who should not have this combination. So uh, naltrexone is an opioid antagonist. Anyone that has chronic pain or is on any kind of pain medication at all should absolutely not be on this drug um, because it's going to make that pain medication ineffective. As well as the propropion has um, black box warnings for uh, potential suicide ideation. Pharmacists want to make sure that um, there are, and, and physicians as well, no other confounding conditions that would prevent them from being able to take the drug. Um, uh, so that's really more of the risk benefit with that agent, uh, where pharmacists really should do that, that good, full assessment of their complete med history, uh, especially if they're being asked to help come up with ideas or potential options for therapy for this. The risk benefit profile with Lorcasrin, um is that uh, knowing that it does target the 5-HT um, to the 5-HTC3 pathway, um, and it does not target the other two pathways, the 5-HT to A and B pathways, which have been attributed to having valvulopathy in patients that have taken for flenfermine, so that um, even with patients that do have a heart history, this is still not a contraindicated contraindicated agent. Um, it still can be used, but it would be used with caution and make sure um, that the patients are, are aware. In clinical trials, though, valvulopathy was not shown to be any higher with the use of lorcasrin than with the use of placebo. But there are some caveats. Um, patients do need to have um, extra monitoring when they're, when they're taking lorcasrin, and they do need to be um, monitored uh, for blood pressure. Um, and uh, uh, heart rate, uh, and they also do need to be monitored um, in terms of, and with any of these agents, you don't want patients to become pregnant. Um, uh, pregnancy is not um, a state where you want to lose weight, so patients should also be notified that if they do become pregnant, they would want to stop this medication. It does not have a teratogenicity that we know of as as now, um, but it's not something that would want to be continued in those patients. Um, in terms of um, the risk benefit with uh, fentyramine and topiramate, um, this actually has some black box warnings and it has some REMS. And uh, the REMS program, so it's your risk mitigation, risk assessment mitigation strategy, uh, is that all healthcare providers and the patient need to know of that it is a um, teratogenetic in pregnancy, specifically with oral facial clefts. 
uh, and that patients need to be on uh, a double barrier for uh, pregnancy precaution if they're female of childbearing ages and taking this agent. Um, in addition, this also needs to have monitoring with, um, with uh, heart rate as that's associated with its use. Um, the side effects that come from topiramate and fentiramine, uh, most of the um, side effects that may prevent patients from being compliant are actually a resultant from the topiramate component. And uh, the biggest side effect is taste disturbances with topiramate, also paresthesias or numbness, especially in the extremities. So those are things that can be counseled appropriately beforehand. And if patients identify these, they can notify their physician and then make a determination whether they should continue or stop the agent. The side effects and the risk benefit of locasferin is um, being able to effectively counsel that it is a low risk of valvulopathy. Um, it specifically affects the receptor, the 5-HT2C uh, receptor, um, and it doesn't have the valvulopathy that was associated with it, the FEN-FEN combination. Um, and in clinical trials, when they were looking at risk of valvulopathy, um, it was not statistically significant increase. It was actually really similar. It was a 2% risk versus like a 2.68% or 2.48% risk um, versus placebo. Um, the other uh, option for uh, or concern that pharmacists should be aware of is this use in pregnancy. It is not, none of these agents are meant to be used in pregnancy. This has a pregnancy category X rating, but not because it is a known teratogenic, it's just not beneficial for patients to be losing weight in pregnancy, and if they become pregnant, they should stop. Um, it has also a potential issue of causing bradycardia in a small subset of patients, and therefore um, uh, monitoring in their physician's office, a heart rate monitoring should be done.